Hello, Alexers. Isn't it one of the best days to have a finance crash course? You've heard us say it over and over again. Success is a numbers game, so you better know your numbers if you want to win. The thing is, most people get distracted and don't know what numbers they should be keeping an eye on. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. If you're not subscribed yet, you're missing out. So we've made a list for you. Here are the most important numbers in business. Number one, profit. Profit is the simplest measure of how well you're performing. It's the fundamental number you should always have in the back of your mind. It's frequently known as the bottom line. If you added together all the money coming in, subtracted all the expenses required to have that money come in, what are you left with? Profit determines the best number to determine how well you're performing. In accounting, there's something called profit and loss. Profit and loss is the simplest way to bring everything together and figure out how well a company is performing financially. It allows you to figure out if you're making money or losing money. As a new business owner, profit is also the technical number you'll be taxed on. As long as you understand how much profit you're theoretically making, you have a clear understanding of how much more you can invest, thus increasing expenses in order to grow the business and pay as little tax as legally required. This is why Amazon pays very little tax despite bringing in so much money. A fundamental business rule, you're not taxed on how much money you're making, you're taxed on how much money is left after your expenses. Number two, revenue and sales. Revenue, sales, or income relate to the money the company is able to bring in. You should be able to tell quickly just how much money you're able to make out of the market space at any given time. Revenue is what's known as the top line, all the money coming in no matter how. Sales is the money coming in from the sale of products and services. A fundamental business rule, sales solve everything. If you're able to generate profitable sales, everything else falls into line. Most businesses get caught up in the financial mumbo jumbo, but the most important part of the business equation is how much money can you bring in? How many sales did you make? How many products did you sell? It doesn't matter how good your business plan is, if you're unable to sell, any business will fail. Number three, total expenses. Most people confuse expenses with the cost of goods. They think expenses are only how much money it costs directly to put together the product or service. Total expenses brings in a lot more costs than what goes into what the customer is getting. Every dollar coming out of the company pocket is an expense and it should be tracked. People who are always quick to judge Apple for their expensive flagship phones lack an understanding of costs. Why would a company charge $1,500 for a device that if broken down part by part, the sum adds up to only $490.50? It's because you don't understand how costs work. By the way, this applies to every company out there that sells a product. We're just using Apple as an example. The company spends billions of dollars in research and development, spending a lot of money and most of the time without a return in hopes of having a technological breakthrough. The same company is paying a ton of money to some of the best designers in the world, tweaking everything about the device to have the best shape, functionality and feel the way it does when you use it. What if we start to add in the cost of building a headquarters, insurance, amortization, the cost of electricity, marketing, storage, rent on retail locations, and furniture for those places, etc. There is more to a product than the sum of the parts that end up in your hand. Always keep that in mind. The cost of a DVD is 20 cents, but the cost of making Avatar and putting it on a DVD is $237 million and 20 cents. Every entrepreneur needs to learn to identify all the expenses that allow you to do what you do and factor those in. It's a mistake most newbie entrepreneurs make. They don't know what to charge because they don't understand the costs. Number four, EBITDA. For some of you, this could be the first time you're hearing about EBITDA. It stands for Earnings Before Interest, Taxes, Depreciation, and Amortization. It's used to establish a company's profitability relative to companies with similar business models. We don't want to make this video too technical, but if you want to be in business, you need to get used to speaking the language of money. So why is this number so important? How do you know how much your company is worth? By the way, we explain valuation in detail at the end of the video, so make sure you watch it in full. 
In order to determine the value of a company, you basically calculate the EBITDA times what is called an industry multiplier. This is why Alux as a media company is valued in the ballpark of $5 million right now. It also helps us to know how to focus our efforts and increase the value of the company. It's a simple way to compare to companies and see who's doing better. Number 5. Cash Flow Cash flow is an incredibly valuable metric to know no matter the business you're in. Cash flow is basically just how much money you're left with on a month-to-month -month basis once you subtract expenses from the money coming in. Both as an entrepreneur or a real estate investor, cash flow is your go-to number to analyze if you're making money or not. Here's an example. You own a house that rents out for $3,000 a month. So what are your expenses? The mortgage, $1,500 a month. Property tax, $350 a month. Repairs, about $100 a month. You might not need to do repairs every month, but every couple of years, things break and need to be fixed. Insurance, $200 a month. You need to pay it just to be safe. Management, $250 a month. You're paying someone else to manage the property so you don't get the calls, but if you want, you could always do it yourself. Vacancy, let's say $100 a month. Every couple of months or years, you'll need to look for new tenants. In the meantime, that property stays empty. You need to factor all of this in. Cash flow equals income minus outcome. In this case, the monthly cash flow for the property is $500. This is how valuable of an asset you have. This is also the part of the video where we recommend you a book, but by this point in time, you've probably already read Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Last week, we recommended the book on real estate investing by Brandon Turner from the Bigger Pockets podcast. We even have a dedicated list of real estate books. Pick any of them and go to alux.com slash free book. If it's your first time signing up, you're getting a free audiobook thanks to our friends at Audible. Number six, price. Pricing correctly can make the difference between making a fortune and going under. It doesn't matter if you're cutting hair, selling art, financial services, or bottles of water in the desert. You need to understand the laws of supply and demand. People will pay any price if the value they're getting outweighs the cost. Your job is to determine how much your product or service is worth to the market. People vote every day with their wallets. If they're not paying what you're asking, you're either overpriced or not talking to the right people. Number seven, gross margin. This is how much you're making with each product sold. In the case of flipping houses, if you buy a tomato for $1 and sell it for $1.50, your gross margin is 50 cents. You should know your gross margin because it allows you to figure out how quickly you can multiply your money. The higher the margin, the more quickly a business grows. When calculating it, you deduct from the amount you're getting from your clients all the direct costs associated with the product. If you're selling tomatoes out of the back of your car, the price of your car isn't a direct cost, but the bulk tomatoes, as well as the reusable hemp bag you're selling them in, are. Number eight, total inventory and total assets. Total inventory means how many pieces of products you have waiting to be sold in your storage or warehouse. If you're selling dresses at $200 a piece and you've got 100 dresses in storage, that means you have $20,000 worth of inventory. But total assets takes it beyond inventory. In this case, total assets groups together everything that has value that could be liquidated if it came to it. The car, the dresses, the cash, the laptop, everything. To keep up with the Apple example we gave earlier, Apple total assets for the quarter ending of March 31st, 2020 were $320 billion. Out of this amount, almost $100 billion is in cash on hand. Number nine, price for one hour of your time. If you were to work for the next five hours continuously at 100% performance, how much value would you generate? How much money could you make for your company? You'd think that's your value per hour, but you'd be wrong. You see, we don't always perform at 100%, so you also have to factor in your laziness. How many hours did you work last year? Do the math, we'll wait. On average, do you work for eight hours in a business day? More, less? On average, there are 260 working days in a year. Multiply 260 times your daily hours number, and that's how many hours you worked last year. Divide the money you brought home last year by the total number of hours and you've got your real hourly rate. This is your value to the marketplace. If you want to get rich, you need to increase this number. Number 10, debt, credit, and interest rate. This is a big one, isn't it? Let's do it. Debt equals how much money you owe. 
Credit equals your ability to secure loans. Interest rate equals how much you're paying in exchange for those loans. By the way, if you've got debt right now, this is a great opportunity for you to refinance that debt. Simply go to a different bank and ask them for an offer. Interest rates are at an all-time low, meaning you can basically get a new loan to pay the previous one because it's cheaper. You're saving money in the process. As you've learned by now, there are two types of debt, good debt and bad debt. Good debt makes you rich, like when you borrow money to purchase a house that brings in rental income. And bad debt makes you poor, like when you borrow money to pay for a PS5 and a new flat screen TV. Even more important than these two is credit, your ability to get your hands on capital if you required it, either through banks or directly from other people. Every entrepreneur and investor should be able to tell at any point in time how much money they owe and how much money they could borrow. This allows you to see whether or not you can access different opportunities. Number 11. Equity Equity is simply what percent of the whole you own. If there are two co-founders in a new startup, you might own 50% of the company at this stage. Let's say an investor jumps on board and purchases 30% of the equity. Now your original equity stake of 50% gets diluted to 35, meaning the investor and your co-founder can technically vote you out if they wanted to or can overrule your decisions. This is why understanding equity is so important. It works the same way in real estate. If you put 20% down to purchase a property and the remaining 80% comes from the bank, when you're paying a mortgage, what you're doing is actually buying back the equity in the property from the bank. If the property is cash flow positive, your renters are the one buying you that equity. Number 12, ROI and ROT. These are two of the most common used acronyms in the business world. ROI is return on investment. ROT is return on time. Return on investment means how much money you got back from an investment made in percentages. Let's say you own an online store with our friends at Shopify and you're trying to sell handmade necklaces, but we're unable to sell any of them so far. You decide to invest $1,000 into marketing buying Facebook ads. The ads go live. You spend all of your advertising dollars and manage to sell 15 necklaces at $100 a piece. Your investment brought in a total of 15 times 100 or $1,500. You invested 1,000 and made 1,500. You made 500 bucks, meaning a 50% return on investment. Congratulations, you should write a book on how to make money using Facebook ads like everyone else these days. Return on time is very similar. The difference is, instead of dollars spent, you're factoring in the number of hours you've put in. Number 13. Prospects, sales conversion, and number of clients. We bundled up these three because they're connected. Prospects are the number of potential clients you're able to reach. These are people who you believe would buy your product or service, but you're not 100% correct. Out of the prospects you reach out to, just a portion will choose to transact with you. This is called a sales conversion. This metric helps you identify how many people out of 100 prospects are you able to turn into customers. The number of clients is pretty self-explanatory, how many people you're actively doing business with. But when it comes to your clients, it's important to mention the pair to distribution. Statistically speaking, 20% of your clients are bringing in 80% of the revenue. Identify these 20% and make sure to solidify that relationship, as well as using them as a template when it comes to prospecting in the future. Number 14. Customer Acquisition Cost and Lifetime Value of Customer Here's where things get super interesting and these two numbers could make or break your business. Use them right and you can build a billion dollar company in the shortest amount of time. Customer acquisition cost equals how much money does it cost you to bring in a new customer. Lifetime value of customer equals how much money the average client will spend with your business. So why do we make it a priority for you to know these two numbers? If the lifetime value of a customer is higher than the customer acquisition cost, then you found a gold mine. You simply spend as much money as you can bringing in as many customers as possible because this arbitrage right here is positive. In the case of physical products, you need to make sure the customer acquisition costs are lower than the profit you're making on each product you sell. In the case of digital products, your acquisition cost simply needs to be lower than the price. This is why some software companies can get away with offering incredibly large discounts. They're not interested in making money off of you right away, but they know that over the long run, they'll get their money's worth. An example you might be familiar with are VPN services, like our partners at NordVPN. 
They run on very small margins. If you go to alax.com slash VPN, you can get a three-year subscription for 70% off. It costs less to get a three-year plan than their competitors charge for a single year. But they know that once you become familiar with their service and they build the trust with the customer or you over the long haul, they will make enough money to keep growing the company. Number 15. Growth and Valuation What does your business do year over year? Are you growing? Are you bringing in more clients? How many more? Every entrepreneur should be able to tell how he or she is performing compared to the previous year, but be careful. It's easy to show big growth numbers if you're doing small numbers to begin with. We always see these examples when startups come to us for investment. We grew our paying customer base by 50% this year. Well, yeah, you had two customers and now you have three, and one of those three is your mom. There are three stages in the evolution of every company. One, traction, starting to get the ball rolling. Two, growth. You have momentum. This is the time to blow it up. And three, maturity. This is where you have to secure what you've built until you're ready to do it all over again. In terms of valuation, there are a lot of ways to valuate a company. It differs from industry to industry, and it's super hard for us to give a cookie cutter method, but we'll do our best. Your company is worth as much as someone else is willing to pay for it. Fundamentally, it boils down to very basic math. How much would it cost someone, money, time, and effort, to build from scratch what you've built? Or how much is your customer base and brand worth to someone else who has the knowledge or infrastructure to monetize it? It all boils down to the buyer's ability to continue to monetize and grow your company. The first one is a lot more generic, while the second one has a bit more sophistication to it. When Facebook bought Instagram for $1 billion, people were shocked. They didn't understand that Facebook had everything set up to monetize and grow their user base exponentially. Last year, Instagram alone generated over $20 billion in revenue. That's more than YouTube. Different people can get different results from the same source. You need to start thinking like this. You need to be able to speak numbers as fluently as you speak English. Which brings us to today's question. What's the most valuable number in your business? What do you use to measure your success? The last part of this educational video lies in the conversation that follows in the comments afterwards. So answer this one and leave any question you might have in the comments. Ourselves and the dedicated members of our community will jump right into your help. And for those of you still around, we of course have a bonus for you. It's not always about the numbers. Here's the truth. If all you care about is numbers, you're losing the soul that's driving real growth. Numbers are incredibly important once you've figured out the core of the business. You first create a business and grow it through the optimization of numbers, not the other way around. You need to provide value to people who need it. They'll pay for it. Unless you're able to solve this problem, it doesn't matter how good your number optimization is. We know this was a more technical and direct educational approach when it comes to the Sunday Motivational video, but we want to continue our mission to educate and inspire the new generation of entrepreneurs. And sometimes you have to go through this type of information and develop the knowledge you have if you want to be able to move up to the next stage. Hopefully we didn't bore you guys to death, and at least those of you stuck around until the end managed to get a nugget of gold out of this video. To you, the true Alexers, we say thank you. If the return on time was there for you today, please write ROT in the comments, as well as your take on these more technical videos. We can't wait to hear from you. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxers. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpicked these videos, which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question on our website, alux.com. Thank you for being an Aluxer, and we'll see you back tomorrow.